Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Fletcher Nelson and I am a third grade teacher in Minnesota. Um, one of my previous videos, somebody asked if I could kind of go through how I teach math and specifically fractions and that was perfect timing because we were starting fractions at that time. So today I'm gonna kind of tell you what our, or what my math time looks like in my classroom, especially this year. Um, we've been, you know, bouncing between hybrid and being full-time in person. So I kind of talk about that a little bit and then I'll show you um, what my fraction unit looks like. So. Here we go. Real quick before I get started, if you're not subscribed already, you should do so and also like and comment on this video. It helps me out a lot. Um, if you do that, then this video is more likely to reach other teachers. So please subscribe, like, comment. I don't care if you just tell me your favorite item at Taco Bell, comment something, thanks. All right, let's get rolling into fractions. All right, so my math time in my classroom is split up into a few different chunks, just because of the way that our schedule works with um, when our specials are and our um, lunch and recess and just our intervention blocks. So we have specials right away in the morning and then we have a huge chunk of time because we have a late lunch. Our lunch isn't until, isn't until 12.45 and they get back in the room at 9.35. So in that morning chunk, we do all of our ELA stuff and then right before um, we, we do a break and then we get into math. So I have to start about 30 to 35 minutes and that is right before lunch and I do um, my whole group math lesson at that time. So that lesson there is me you know, introducing a new topic. Um, I'll go through what those lessons look like and then um, they'll have a really quick exit ticket and that's again, like I said, the whole class not differentiated at all. It's the new content going to them, but I use that time to kind of see how my students are doing, who needs more practice, who can maybe, you know, be pushed on and do something new because they already understand it. So it just helps me see where my students are at. So that's our whole group math, math time right before lunch. Then in the afternoon, when they come back from lunch and recess, we do a number talk, which again is whole group, but that's just them mentally solving problems and they share with each other. So they're, um, for example, we start off the year pretty basic, but if it was like, let's go with like 12 plus nine. They would just kind of walk through and explain how they're solving it. Like, are they doing 12 plus 10 and taking one away? Um, some of them will be like, oh, I took 12 and I took eight from the nine to get to 20. And then I added the one more I had left over to get to 21. So that number talk time is just a way for us to explain our thinking. So that's just really quick. That's about 10 minutes. And then the last chunk of our math time is our guided math time. So that is towards the end of the day and that is determined by our intervention time. So it's not, I wish it was at a better time, but you know, you can't have a perfect schedule. Our time is from 2.40 to like 3.10. So it's the very, very end of the day. Um, but that's the time when if students are on IEP and they need to work with their case manager for, um, if they're uh, in the special ed program, they would go with their, their SPED teacher. If um, students qualify to be in the title program, that's the same time the title intervention teachers are pulling for math. So that's the same time I'm doing my guided math in here. So I do have some students who will leave at that time, but the students who are left in here, I do some sort of small group mini lesson or some sort of rotation. And that's when I'm able to um, kind of push on kids who already understand the concepts in our whole group lesson. And I'm able to go back and reteach it to students who maybe need a little bit more practice. So that's what our math looks like in my room. Um, I'm gonna kind of just talk today about what our whole group math looks like. We do use the curriculum everyday math. It's like a very old version. So we don't really follow it at all. Like I have the workbooks and stuff, but I don't really use them. So this is what I do in my classroom. I'm gonna eventually do a screen recording here and show you um, what my lessons look like in Google Drive. But I have all of my fraction lessons laid out and then my exit tickets within a folder in that folder. So those are my whole group lessons. And then we also have interactive math notebooks that I made. So I have these, and then I have some different manipulatives that I'm going to show you as well. So let's start with the lessons. I'm going to hop over and do a screen recording so I can show you what it looks like on my computer. Okay. So this is inside my teams, my third grade team, we have a shared um, kind of like a folder with all of our stuff in it. This is inside our math and our fractions folder. So as you can see, um, we have some review ones that one of my teammates made. I made all these slideshows just because I list them on TPT anyways. Um, I know they don't have to use these. It's not like everybody is using them, but again, we just kind of have folders that we toss in all the stuff that we've made or created that way we can share with each other. So I will show you what these um, slides look like. And again, so you can kind of see day one, we have an introduction to fractions, making fractions, fraction of a set. Then we move on to mixed numbers, number line, mixed numbers on a number line. 
And then we go equivalent fractions, comparing fractions, and our last day is a fraction of a set. So again, some of these might end up being more than one day, like number lines are usually a little bit more difficult for them than like the visuals. So just because it only has one day of number lines there doesn't mean I'm only gonna spend one day. Obviously, if my whole class is struggling with it, then I continue to work on it and find a new way to present the information. But if most of them understand it, then I do move on. And then again, I would reteach to the students who need the extra help in our um, during our guided math time. So this is kind of just how it's laid out. Um, let's go with, for example, like the first lesson. So let's go intro to fractions. Um, when you open it up, um, have our learning targets and then some vocab. And this would kind of go with my interact interactive math notebook, which I'll show you after this. And then we just kind of go through some of those vocab, um, have some visuals. You talk about reading the fractions. And then I do have a brain pot video linked in here. I, since I do this, these on TPT, I've just put in one from like a YouTube one, but if you, I click here because we have a Brain Pop subscription and it brings us to the actual website so we can do the quiz afterwards and whatever else. Um, but I do like using videos to introduce a topic because, I mean, like if you've ever used a Brain Pop video, they do a great job of having the visuals and explaining it. And then, I don't know, it's just a good way for them to be introduced to a new topic. So I have the Brain Pop video and then we go through and we kind of do some guided practice. So this is us doing it together. Um, like just kind of talking about it. And then eventually I'll have them start doing it on their whiteboards as well. So again, a very quick introduction to fractions. Um, let's go into like fractions of a set. So the following days, whenever we will always start our lesson with review from the previous days. So we have our learning targets, then we do our review. So we talked about reading them and then identifying which fraction of a shape is shaded, making or representing our fractions. Have another brain pop video for fractions for um, sets and then we go into it and again this would be done with either me modeling right away or with us kind of doing it together for a few problems and then eventually i would have them doing it on their whiteboard so they're all up at the carpet i let them bring up a chair um, again these whole group lessons are usually about mm, about 15 to 20 minutes depending on the day sometimes maybe a little longer um, i try to keep them you no know, more than that but they do include multiple parts so we usually have some sort of a, the video and then the um, guided practice and their independent practice on their whiteboards so I would be checking to see how they're doing with these as they're working on their whiteboards. And then, um, yeah, after that, I go into their exit tickets. So this is just kind of what the lessons look like, I guess. So I try to use a lot of visuals, especially for fractions. Um, when it's not COVID, I like to have them come up to the board a lot and share their thinking and um, how they know they got what they did. We still do that somewhat, but it was just a lot easier before COVID or COVID, obviously. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of how the layout I use and these lessons have worked really, really well this year. I like having them um, just there ready to open up. I like having the different components of it. I like having students be able to come to the board and do them. Um, and yeah, so that is how the lessons are set up. The next thing I wanna show you on my computer is the exit tickets. Again, I make these and they're just very quick, just usually two problems from the day's lesson so I can grade them very quickly to see if students were able to do it on their own. I am obviously watching them during the lesson too, so I kind of already know who's doing well and who might be um, struggling a little bit or maybe not understanding. Um, and I obviously make note of that. And then these are very quick and they actually help me out a lot just knowing who would need to, you know, be have maybe like a little quick mini lesson to reteach it or go a little bit more in depth. So. Uh, again, like that first day for introduction of fractions, I just put two on a page and then I just cut down the middle. So they just had to say what fraction is shaded and then they had to shade three fifths of the circle. Um, if you get further down, so our last one, fraction on a number line. Oh wait, exit ticket, fraction of a number. So they have one third of nine, they'll find three fifths of 20. Um, we have our number line ones. So again, just two problems quick from our lesson for that day. And it helps me see um, how they're doing with it. That is kind of what my whole group's les lessons look like. I use those slides to introduce the topic. There's practice problems on there. Again, they're up right here at the whiteboard. Um, they bring up a chair or sit on the floor, whatever they want to do, whatever they're more comfortable with. And then that way I can walk around and I check all their work. And um, I don't know, it has, that's how I've always done my math and it's worked well for me. And like I said, then I have these exit tickets that I can 
I mean, look over and grade very quickly. Like I said, our whole group math is right before lunch. So once they finish that, they go wash their hands and they put them in the math turn-in bin. And while they're washing their hands, I can go through and I already have them sorted who got them all right, who got missed one and who missed both. And I, I'm not, I don't want to have a full, I don't need to do a full worksheet in order to know if they can do it. Um, I just need one or two problems and I'm able to see that with what I um, observed during the lesson and I'm good to go. Okay, so we have that part covered. Uh, another thing I do is they have these math notebooks. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I just made these over winter break. So this isn't something I've done all year, but I'm excited to have it done so I can do it all of next year. If you're interested, it'll be linked on TPT. Um, we've been using this as review for the units that we missed. So if you can see these tabs, I have place value, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then we have fractions. So in our fraction ones, and this isn't to students, this is my example one, but what I'm doing now is we'll have our vocabulary. So words they need to know, and it's just a foldable. And again, presentation, this is an example, so it's not filled out. Um, but so they have their vocab in their notebook and then they'll have any anchor charts we create. So again, I use those slides, but for some lessons I'll create an anchor chart to display around the room. Again, usually like the introductory lessons um, to go with it. So this would be a copy of any anchor chart that I would make with the students or sometimes just information that's provided on the slideshow. So they have this and then they're answering a couple of problems. And the reason I'm using these notebooks this year is that way students have a, a reference tool. Um, we like we use Prodigy quite a bit, so if they ever come across like a Prodigy question, like, ooh, I forgot how to do that, but I know we learned it, they can come back to their notebook and kind of relook at the anchor chart and their practice problems to help them out. So I have this again, so we have the number lines. Um, then we have comparing fractions. So they don't do this every single day, but, um, and then, equivalent fractions. Uh, so yeah, they have this as a reference tool to another place for them to just have like the visuals and some example problems. A lot of the times I have them complete this during their um, guided math in the afternoon then. So not always during our whole group lesson. So interactive math notebook, another useful tool. And then lastly, I like to incorporate a lot of games. So whether it's um, assigning fraction stuff on Prodigy or a different website for them to do, because they love that type of stuff, or if it's a review game in here or using manipulatives. So I'm gonna show you some of the fraction manipulatives I have as well. And again, these would probably be used either to introduce a new topic or in guided math if I um, have some students who, you know, maybe just need the hands-on. And I love using manipulatives, but again, COVID makes it a little bit more difficult this year. Um, so some of the ones that I have, for example, this would be really good for comparing and equivalent. I just have these little fraction tiles. They're magnetic so they can be up on the board. And this just helps them, you know, compare the two, like which one's bigger or helps to make um, equivalent fractions. Maybe I'll flip the camera around so you can see these better. All right, so these are, again, magnetic on the back and it, they can create them. Um, they can make a, try to make a hole. And there would obviously need to be eight pieces there to make a hole for these. I have them in squares, and here's what some that are not taken apart yet look like. So you have your sixth, you have your tenths, there's a half. So again, for equivalent fractions, they could use this to find out how many sixths would make up one half, and there they go. They can find out that three sixths and one half are equivalent fractions. So just a hands-on way um, for them to you know, kind of get introduced to a new topic or to help build that conceptual understanding of a new topic. This game here is pretty basic. It says it's recommended for like two to grades two to three, but it's just matching um, a fraction with the image and it is self-checking. So again, students could use this to um, just practice identifying fractions. So if they had this, they can recognize it's two fifths. So then they have to find the matching um, fraction to go with it, which, oh, there it is. So here they go and they're able to find out if they are correct, whether it fits together. So just another kind of quick game that they could do during that guided math time when I'm doing rotations. It allows me to meet with other groups while they're still doing activities that they can um, have instant feedback because again, it's self-correcting and it's hands-on, has visuals. Um, something kind of low, I mean, no prep for me, but it's beneficial and useful to the students. I have this game from when I taught um, fifth grade, just a bingo game. Obviously, I wouldn't use it with my third graders, but if you teach upper grades, stuff like this is awesome for a review. So this would be adding fractions and I believe subtracting fractions as well and decimals. And then they just have their bingo card with the answers. So that was a fun way to practice um, if you teach adding mixed numbers at all. 
And along with those manipulatives, then too, you can find tons of free, like don't always feel like you need to go buy something off Teachers Pay Teachers. You can search for just like free hands-on things, um, like um, fraction sorts. So if you teach third grade and you want them to recognize that, you know, fractions can be different shapes and sizes or sets of a fraction, you can find these sorts where they would cut them out and have to find all the ones that are showing um, one third and ones that are showing five sixths and the ones that are showing, showing five eighths and kind of cut and sort all those fractions, another hands-on way for them to practice. They can, fractions are so easy to create their own fractions. Um, I've done this in the past and probably will do this here. It's just, again, COVID has me rethinking things, but um, giving students just like a pack of M&Ms and they have to go through and say what fraction each color is. So they count how many they have total and that's their whole. And then um, like three twelfths are red and, um, you know, I'm not gonna, you know what I mean though. So going through and just kind of writing down the fraction that is represented by each color of their um, bag of M&Ms. So tons of ideas like that you can do. I don't have anything like that prepped right now. And like I said, I'm here. Oh, I didn't say that, but um, I'm here on a Sunday just cause I'm doing laundry and my laundromat's like two blocks that way. So I just wanted to come in and make this video while I was here um, and show you with the materials I had ready. All right, so what I will do is I will link all the stuff I talked about in the description. So uh, if you're interested in my math slides, my math interactive notebook, or any of these games or manipulatives I have, I will link those. Um, I'll try to find all the links for them. And then I will also try to link some free activities like the sorts I was talking about or just some kind of um, project ideas for fractions that you could have your students do. Because like I said, there are tons of them out there, but I know sometimes it's not, um, we don't always have the time or the energy to want to search for stuff. And I totally get that because I'm the exact same way. So I hope that this helped. Um, I hope it makes sense of how my math block is laid out, how we have our whole group time. And then I take what I see from there and differentiate for our guided math time. And yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And like I said, please like, comment, subscribe, because it helps me out. And I know it's awkward to say and everyone says it, but just do it, please. All right. I am going to clean up and get out of here. So see you next time. And let me know if you have any other content you would like to see. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.